Viruses are the cause of many of the most overwhelming diseases, and understanding how viruses reproduce and spread is essential for combating these diseases. Professor John Yin and his collaborators at the University of Wisconsin in Madison are combining observations made in the laboratory with powerful computer modeling techniques to study viruses in different ways. The process of viral infection, for example, is one that Professor Yin can visualize directly in his laboratory. Uh, currently, uh, we, can, we can begin to look at how infections spread uh, in the petri dish, kind of a pandemic in a petri dish, and what you visualize is one cell initially getting infected, and then later, as the infection spreads, other cells being infected. A viral infection starts in a single cell, but can quickly grow to involve other cells, tissues, people, and even countries in the case of an epidemic. Because there are a number of physical and mathematical similarities at each level, computer simulations can be used to study virus growth and dispersion. Here we have math potential for mathematical models at the level of the cell where the virus is reproducing itself. There's another level at which the virus is spreading from cell to cell. And then there's the other level where uh, infected humans coming in contact with non-infected humans can spread. Uh, there are mathematical models that describe uh, these at all levels. The goal in modeling the individual mechanisms of the virus is to allow researchers to predict the collective behavior of those mechanisms in the body. One nice kind of simple analogy for thinking about the parts is if you take your, uh, your car apart, right, you take all the parts and you lay them out, you'll have thousands of pieces. Uh, but based on those parts laid out there, you can't predict how they interact. You can't tell me um, how fast can this car drive. You can't tell me how many miles per gallon it'll get. Once a model has been created, the process begins of testing the model and improving it to more closely mirror the behavior of the virus in the real world. It's a process that can take a lot of trial and error. So we might do the experiment and say, well, we're off. Uh, we, we didn't. We made a prediction and, and it's different in the experiment. In which case, we have to go back to the drawing board and say, what's wrong with the model? What's missing? Uh, so I think the models will always open up new experiments. The real payoff comes when a researcher is able to use the models to simulate the symphony of possible interactions. For example, predicting the mutations of a virus in response to a specific strategy of drug treatment. But now you might say, okay, well, what's the evolutionary potential to escape? How might mutations come about to escape that strategy? And then you might find, oh, that's a, there's a very easy way to escape if you just make this mutation over here, and now this drug has no, no effect. On the other hand, there might be another drug for which you can't find any escape mechanisms. And you go, oh, you know, that might be, a, that, there's some potential there. By using modeling to explore the possible mutations, the Yin Lab is able to play a game of genetic chess, looking several moves ahead to find a virtual drug that won't let the virus mutate out of its predicament. So when a virus infects a cell, it, produce, it can produce defective viruses. These are, virus, these are mini viruses that carry some of the virus information but are unable to reproduce because they don't carry essential genes. These have very interesting properties because if they get into a cell with a normal virus, they can steal away the resources of the virus. So the defective particle becomes a parasite of the virus infection. So you can think of the virus evolving away from drugs, but this, there might be drugs that we can eventually develop that will evolve, co-evolve with the virus. Professor Yin believes it may be possible to harness the virus and its genetic machinery to treat and perhaps eventually cure disease. One strategy is to explore using viruses to kill cancer cells uh, without killing healthy cells. So one might be able to exploit the difference between healthy cells that can communicate distress and change their susceptibility to infection, and cancer cells that in some cases cannot uh, communicate. Uh, then you could imagine letting a virus loose in the presence of healthy and cancerous cells and uh, selectively killing the cancer cells. Professor Yin's approach brings together the viewpoints of the biologist and the engineer, giving him a unique perspective. So we're trying to unify ways biologists, physical scientists uh, work together. They bring different cultures, different ways of working, different assumptions. And we're, we recognize that there's an opportunity for these different perspectives to, to create uh, a more unified, integrated picture.